Hi, you join me as I'm charging my electric car for free at my local gym where I can do this for up to four hours. If I wanted to fully charge my car and go a range of 200 miles, it would take me a bit longer, but I have a home charger and I could do that for a cost of really about $10 from dead empty to full and drive my car 200 miles. With more efficient cars like a Tesla Model 3, I, it's even cheaper. But that's me living in Colorado, home charging. This equation changes drastically based off the size of your car's battery, uh, what kind of car it is, like a truck or an SUV, and also where you're going, how you wanna charge. If I wanna fill this car up at Electrify America station about a few miles from here, I can do that from dead. However, that'll run me $40 for a full charge. However, that can charge me up in my car in half an hour, some cars even less time. So how you charge and where you charge drastically changes the cost of, well, filling up your electric car. And someone ran some really interesting numbers recently about how this compares to gas cars. A comparable truck, comparable SUV, and comparable sedan, gas versus EV, what are those costs to fill up, and how do they vary across all 50 of our states in the US? This is what someone's done. I'm gonna link the tool in the description, but let's go over it after the intro. I'm gonna explain how we use it, the methods they used in this kind of a um, study comparison and um, how it might be helpful to you as a first time EV buyer. So if you're interested about EV cost, how it compares to a tank of gas for your car, keep watching this video, let's find out. All right, so to lend some numbers to these examples, we're gonna basically be relying on research that was done by a company or firm called Energy Innovations in collaboration with a Washington Post columnist, Michael Corin, who wrote an article uh, recently that was helpful, basically asking, is it cheaper to refuel an EV battery or a gas tank? So what they're doing here is they're taking comparable vehicles across 50 states, looking at average gas prices, average energy prices, and then comparing them. But it's not so simple because energy is billed differently. Gas, okay, you bill it per gallon, the average price of a gallon in each state is different. Like in some states like Hawaii, it's way more expensive uh, to fill up with gas, uh, or California is really expensive. So is Washington State, whereas Alabama, it's pretty cheap gas. Energy, however, there's kind of two rates to consider. There is your public uh, rate, uh, or sorry, your residential rate, uh, whether you're gonna charge at home, based off your energy company. Now that could be either build flat rate or it could be built based off when you're charging. We'll talk about that later. And then there's the kind of billing public charging uh, networks like Electrify America, Tesla Superchargers. They tend to be more expensive, but they're more convenient. If you're on road trips, they're much quicker charges. Uh, or if you don't have a home charger, these are what you're using. So what the researchers here did is they assumed a balance based off uh, research done by actually NREL, with National Renewable Energy Laboratory. If you're in the science space, you've probably heard of them. But uh, they, you know, have kind of uh, floated this assumption that most EV driving, not an assumption, they've done research that suggests 80% of EV charging is done at home for people. This is kind of an average statistic, but let's assume 80% done residentially. If you're so fortunate enough as to have a home charger, you've uh, invested in the cost of a home charger, maybe a utility company give you a rebates. Let's just assume you've spent that money. It's upfront, it's one time. Now to continuously use that, you're just looking at your residential energy rate. So the battery in an electric car is gonna be, let's say 50 kilowatt hours in a Tesla Model 3. You multiply 50 by the kilowatt hour rate, the same way you would take the um, you know, rate of a gallon of gas and multiply it by the gallons in a fuel tank. So let's give an example here to color in all these numbers. They use the example of Washington and the Pacific Northwest as a kind of extreme example of where the savings are highest for an EV versus a gas car. Now, do consider energy innovation. They say they're a nonpartisan firm, but of course they are uh, on their uh, perspective is more towards renewable energy and electric vehicles. I'm just breaking down the research they did and explaining selfishly, practically for you, what these savings could be. And they find in Washington that, uh, let's say for comparable sedans, they take the Tesla Model 3, the Hyundai Onyx 6, and the Chevy Bolt as their EV sedans, uh, and compare them to a Toyota Camry. Now the Bolt is technically a hatchback or a compact crossover in my view, not a sedan, but I, I get what they're doing. Um, Comparable-ish cost vehicles, the EVs, especially the Ionic 6 and the Model 3 in this example, are gonna be a bit more expensive up front. But what they find is in Washington, because gas is so expensive, it's nearly $5 a gallon, um, it's really expensive to fill up a Camry. To go its full fuel tank range, which is 506 miles, it is $78. 
you take a Tesla Model 3, and yes, you have to recharge it to reach that same 506 mile range. So what they do is they multiply the cost to refill a Tesla Model 3 with energy. Uh, they multiply it by 1.86, which is the factor to get to the full, you know, 500 plus mile range of the Camry. Uh, and then of course, right, they're using the energy balance assumption of 80% charging done at home, which in Washington is very cheap. 10 cents a kilowatt hour residential rate, and then 20% of the charging balance done at a public network like Electrify America. I should mention they use 48 cents a kilowatt hour at Electrify America, which is an average. Electrify America has that as their current flat rate at stations. If you're not a member, if you pay them $7 a month, they discount that by 25%. And in the coming few weeks, actually, as of me recording this, they're going to be changing their billing model to where each station will have its own local pricing. So this might change a lot. Some states will probably get more expensive. Some states will get cheaper. This is always changing based off energy pricing. This is just in the here and now. They're using this as an example, and I don't fault them. It's the best we can do at the moment. Uh, Tesla superchargers do bill a little more dynamically, but they're using Electrify America because that's a network that currently every EV can access. Even Teslas can charge at Electrify America with an adapter. In the future, there'll be more openness. Tesla superchargers will be usable by more vehicles. Electrify America will build differently. This will become more complicated. But for now, let's just take this for what it is. Anyhow, so we look at... Um, this charging balance and we see $16.54 to drive a Tesla Model 3 over 500 miles compared to the Toyota Camry. So very preferable. And we see the Ionic 6 and the Chevy Bolt come in a bit more expensive. The reason is the relative efficiency of these vehicles. The Model 3 and the Ionic 6 are super efficient. So uh, even though the Model 3 actually has a smaller battery than the Chevy Bolt, it goes further in distance because it's a really efficient car. Similar story for the Ionic 6, though. It looks like it's a bit less efficient uh, based off what they're assuming here. They're taking EPA ranges, by the way, which we've criticized in other videos, and we've shown that those can't always be trusted, especially with some manufacturers like Tesla who are really optimistic about their range. So do take this with a grain of salt. These are rough numbers again. But again, we have to use something. So this theoretical kind of a, um, this theoretical math is hopefully a good guide of what to expect. No pun intended. This is out of spec guide after all. Anyhow, they find with SUVs taking comparable models, the Tesla Model Y, the Hyundai Ionic 5, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, and the Volkswagen ID4, Comparing to a gas C Honda CRV, again, way cheaper to fill up in Washington to go the same distance, which uh, for the uh, what they've normalized to, the Honda CRV is 420 miles. It's like $70 almost to fill up, whereas it's $20 or less for a lot of these EVs um, to go the same distance from what they find. Then for trucks, it's a huge difference because you compare a Ford F-150 with a huge gas tank to admittedly a very large battery in a Ford F-150 Lightning or a Rivian, but those vehicles being on electric powertrains are just more efficient and they find that it's a lot cheaper in Washington. Now, savings are varying and that's what they're showing here. So Washington, uh, Oregon, Pacific Northwest states with very expensive gas and relatively very cheap electricity see huge savings. States like Maine and the Northeast and a lot of Southeast states uh, where gas is pretty darn cheap and electricity is middling too expensive, well, they find the savings there are more moderate to lean. States like California have expensive everything. They have expensive gas, but they also have expensive electricity. So the savings tend to kind of be somewhere in the middle, still pretty good. And do keep in mind, states like California do have some of the best incentives for EVs, rebates when you buy up front and other programs that they don't consider here. So do consider those as well. But super interesting to look at this, and then we've looked at an outlier like Hawaii. That's interesting because they have expensive gas, but really expensive electricity. I actually was in Hawaii a few months ago, and they had the opportunity to uh, rent a Mustang Mach-E on Turo there. I charged on the island of Oahu. I actually visited every fast charger on that island, both Electrify America and Shell Recharge stations. And it was fascinating to see that in Hawaii, um, you know, they've accepted Electrify America because of their national billing and Shell Recharge because of whatever they advertise, a 51 cents a kilowatt hour billing rate for DC fast charging. The residential rate is actually barely cheaper. It's 43 cents a kilowatt hour. Electricity is pretty expensive on an island. Hawaii is um, a prime example of that. And you can see here, the savings are pretty modest uh, for EVs versus gas in Hawaii. However, Hawaii, like California and several other states, does have some fairly good EV incentives. So keep that in mind. But again, 
weighing against EVs or the initial cost, they don't also don't factor in of installing a home charger, of having to drive to the charger uh, to fill up, uh, and all of these other factors. Now, I will say there's conveniences also, subjective things with an EV, like I live with an EV, and the convenience of charging at home most of the time, never having to drive to a gas station or an EV charge station like Electrify America, and just filling up at home or fueling up, charging up, whatever you want to call it, that is so convenient. And you know, you can't put a price, I can't put a price on that, but that is a subjective benefit for me. You could probably put a price on it if you want to get into, uh, you know, time is money, you absolutely can. But that applies, of course, to those who charge at home. And this is, again, using a model of 80% charging at home, 20% publicly. If you charge entirely on DC fast chargers, you're actually going to probably spend as much, if not more, with an EV. Uh, they don't factor in this. Uh, I wish this model was a bit more dynamic, like on this tool, they let you change the balance, but they kind of just let you look at each state with this kind of 80-20 assumption. But if you charge entirely on fast charging, I wouldn't recommend it. I actually would recommend looking at if your community has charge point stalls or level two slower charging that you can use, that tends to be much more in line with residential pricing. And in many cases, it's actually free. Um, so if you find, you know, at grocery stores or gyms, play, uh, movie theaters, some places have free charging, that's pretty sweet. I take advantage of that when I can. And I encourage you to look into that as well. My girlfriend, for instance, in a parking lot at work is able to charge for uh, basically free because it's there's just outlets there. Uh, it's a very slow charge, but she's able to plug in, gets a meaningful charge while she's in grad school. And then when she gets back to her Chevy Bolt in the garage, it's got some charge back. Uh, and there's even charge point units there as well as she can use if those are available and they're not filled up. So that's super cool. Um, another benefit of EV ownership, but again, very locale dependent. Some towns, some cities have much more level two charging than others. If again, if you're depending on public fast charging, the Electrify Americas, the Tesla superchargers of the world, EVgo, stations like that, you're going to be generally looking at some of the most expensive ways to charge an EV. And in some cases, you're going to come out behind gas in terms of cost. One more thing here is they have some kind of slides they prepared of cool, you know, direct comparisons of what it would cost to travel, you know, the distance of uh, the gas car and then the yearly fill up costs. And they find that Chevy Bolt versus a Camry is, you know, on average cheaper to fill up uh, to go the same distance. No surprise. Annually, you could save like $760 as we see in this example. However, I think in this example, it's not perfect because the Chevy Bolt is a uh, it's a hatchback. It's a bit smaller than a Toyota Camry in terms of size and passenger space. So don't know if that's a perfectly fair comparison. Then we go into something like a Honda CRV versus Volkswagen ID4. I think that's a bit more of a direct comparison. We see larger savings, larger vehicle class. The benefits of an efficient EV powertrain are even larger. Then we get to F-150, very direct comparison. Ford sells, of course, the traditional gas truck and the Lightning EV truck and we see savings that are pretty large in absolute terms because again, big battery on the EV truck, big gas tank on the F-150, big vehicles, bigger numbers everywhere. Anyhow, I hope this has been a, a like thoughtful video if you're considering EV ownership about what to think in terms of cost of charging, breaking down research that has been done in this area. This is so local and so specific and that's where I think the big, um, the big lesson is here is that uh, the two big factors here are where you live, which is what they helpfully point out, and what I wish they pointed out, but what I'm going to point out to you is how you charge. The balance of how much you charge at level two public stations, charge at your home if that's an option, versus charging publicly. These costs vary so much, and your balance of how much you charge at each is going to drastically impact how much you spend on getting around. The one other thing I want to introduce before I close off here is time of use building, that off-peak, on-peak uh, programs. Many states, many utility companies in many states offer this. Excel Energy in Colorado, where I live, does, but I'm not enrolled in it currently. You have to have a smart meter. Your utility company has sometimes a voluntary enrollment in this. Sometimes it's mandatory, depending on where you live uh, and the choice of your utility company. But basically what they'll do is they'll bill you cheaper rates 
uh, let's say in the middle of the night when no one's using electricity versus more expensive rates in the middle of the day when electricity use is in higher demand. EVs tend to benefit from this because you're going to get cheaper, uh, basically incentivized charging to kind of help stabilize the grid and help those low demand periods have higher demand because their power generation likes to just, you know, stay at a flat line. And the more they can keep that, uh, keep that less, uh, you know, basically lower the curve, keep the line flat, increase demand off peak, lower demand on peak, EVs help stabilize that, you're going to see savings. That is if you're in a time of use or an on-peak, off-peak billing program. If you're not, it doesn't matter what time you charge your EV, but if you are, definitely charge your EV overnight. Tends to, I think, work for most people's schedules, and you're going to see savings, uh, potentially a very huge savings if you're in a state like California, where the power you know, for residential use can be very expensive. I think that's super helpful, something to consider as well. But hopefully that's been a good introduction to these topics. If you have comments or questions about this, please do leave those in the comments below this video. And then we have an email where you can submit future uh, topics and suggestions that you want to see explored in other videos by me or other people on that Aspect team. That is guide at aspectstudios.com. We have that in the video description as well. Additionally, I am going to link uh, this tool that I've been showing you, uh, Energy Innovations kind of map here. Again, I think it's broadly, generically useful to see which states have bigger savings, but it's not going to show you what it looks like if you have a significantly different balance from charging at home versus public charging. You're going to figure it out for yourself or ask us. But anyhow, enough of me rambling. I've been Max with a spec guide. Thank you so much for watching this. I'll see you in the next video.